back in the studio, my friends. Welcome to RC Sparks. It is farking freezing outside today. Uh, and much like everybody else, I am on the inside trying to pass some time with my RC hobby. If you don't know what RC is, welcome to the show. It's radio control. Uh, some people would say it's remote controlled. It's completely up to you. Uh, depending on how you see it, you guys can argue about the outcome of that in the video comment section down below. Uh, but what am I doing today? Something fairly simple. Look on the back here. La -da -da -da. This body itself, if let's just back up a little bit here. Who would actually who actually tuned in uh, for the uh, episode 11 where I took Project Overkill out to my backyard trail park? Leave a like click right now if you saw it. Uh, and and I got to tell you, it performed far beyond my expectations. I was very pleased with it. I do see in some areas where I could use some improvement for sure. Uh, and and one of those we're going to fix today because we saw a winch line snap when I was out on the uh, yellow, you know, uh, suspension beams. No. Oh, uh. broke the winch line. Now look at this. I know a lot of people are, are looking at this right now. What the heck has he done? Well, this top kick body or GMC top kick, Pro, Pro Line Racing made this. It's been discontinued now. A lot of people might even know it as a Chevy Kodiak, uh, or you may know it from the Transformers movie as Ironhide. Uh, but this one here is a replica or, or more of a tribute to uh, Project Overkill, the original one I did many, many years ago on YouTube. Well, look at these diesel stacks. These diesel stacks actually were uh, cut or molded right into the Lexan, into the body. Now, if I was to take this out, you'd be like, oh my God, there's holes in the body behind there. But that's exactly what I did. I wanted real diesel stacks. And for those that are just wondering about this truck and just tuning in, welcome to the series. This is like a dedicated build I was doing for the Tough Truck Competition of 2020, if that's still being held. We all don't know right now. But uh, at the time of this filming, I'm still hopeful that it may. And so the Tough Truck competition basically takes over two days to complete. It's six different events, sometimes more, and one of them is being Mud Bog. Well, one of the challenges I see every year in Mud Bog with Tough Trucks that are very fast or have lids like this is that they have an issue with air building up on the inside of the uh, inside of the roof. And what will happen as you're driving along, you'll 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 get into the deep water Water, your whole truck will start, if it's not heavy enough, it'll start to float because it's got this giant air bubble that's trying to escape. And if you've seen my TTC uh, videos before, you'll see lots of trucks when they get air under there start to tip over because that air wants out and then bloop, they're under and gone. Well, number one thing for me, these stacks right here will actually allow a lot of air to escape for me straight up through because I cut it out, drilled it down, and these tubes were the perfect fit to fit on the inside. Now, I do have it taped off right now, but I'm gonna show you anyway, because I can open these up just to show you how they're mounted. Ta-da! Just that quick and easy. So what you're seeing, even though this looks terrible probably to you guys, I don't know. Everybody's got an opinion these days and that's fine. You're seeing tons of Gorilla Tape on the inside which strengthen the Lexan and also deaden the sound of that, you know, plasticky Lexan sound when you drive away. It makes it nice and strong. Also, if you'll notice, that these pipes, they actually fit perfectly into the groove of the molded area. Look at that. So all I did was have to figure out a way to get them in there, to get them to click into this area. I could clean this up. What you guys are seeing here is actually a lot of the Gorilla Tape. Uh, I could get in here with a razor blade, but I didn't really plan on opening this up, but I'm showing you guys. So what did I do to make these? Hey, isn't that cool? Real diesel stacks, super simple. You guys noticed that this truck was over here on the bench, uh, Cran Killen or RC Vikings if you're watching right now. Big shout out to you buddy all the way over from Canada. Still got this beautiful truck. Now I did not use pieces from this truck, but this is gonna be a perfect example of what it was. You guys can go onto eBay, check out for these parts. Look at this, here is 
a simple um, outside cover, right? Now it's much longer. I only had to use one of these for the two diesel stacks. And then these stacks themselves, they actually come in pieces. You'll see it kind of mounts onto a post right there. Well, this is the tube. Well, this is the perfect tube to fit into that area. So what I did was I cut this in half, one of these single tubes, I had an extra one. Then I cut this one ah, down to size. And then I kind of, you know, I cut it even smaller and then I pressed it together and I used some uh, CA glue just to keep it pressed. And bingo, bango, bongo, there you go. You got yourself a nice scale diesel stack. And I thought that's perfect because not only is it going to look awesome and give me extra scale points uh, because you get pointed in and you know for all these different kind of competitions. I got to do that with two hands. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> but there it is in a nutshell. I didn't get to stick it in there yet, uh, but I will in a moment. Boom, there's so much innuendo in these shows. Uh, but overall, that is how you would make it. So this is going to allow air to escape. It's still going to keep a certain amount of air in there, which is good because I want that front nose to be actually up when I'm in the mud. I don't want all of that air in there though. I just want a bit so it keeps me floating, which is perfect. So people that are in the tough truck this year, if we have one, you better be bringing game because I'm coming for you guys. You'll also notice a hole drilled right at the very top. That's where the brake light sticker is going to go. I'm still going to have a hole there which will allow even more air to escape that gets caught at the back. So you can see it's not a large hole. It's still going to be able to control the flow uh, basically on how long I'm in the mud for. So that should help give me traction where normally other people will be floating. Now I know it's not the prettiest cuts on the Lexan, in fact I'm a little bit embarrassed on how that's looked. Um, but I do have, and I did source another top kick body which is fantastic, and as you can see once you start cleaning it up with the razor blade, it's going to do uh, much better. But I'm going to do this body again, uh, but at least I'm getting all my rough ideas out and I'm lucky enough to have found another one out there, so continue on! Okay, so for those that were following the build, you guys know that, or you may not, I put in dual uh, servo winches from Reefs RC. You can see the 422 HD, one on the front, and of course, because it's overkill, staying with the theme, one on the back, which gives me a rear servo. Uh, now, uh, there was a few mistakes I made when I first installed this. A, I didn't spool it the right way um, because it has to feed through the center mount. If you guys watch, I don't know, it's like episode 10, I think it is, you'll see me install this. Um, but I did fix it before I went out in episode 11 when I broke the winch line on the back. No. Now my bad, it was completely user error on my side. I was excited to use the winch. I did not place the winch hook high enough. And really in that scenario, unless I had had rear steer, I shouldn't have been winching anyway. And one of the things I said was thankfully, uh, you know, this servo winch actually comes with seven feet of uh, cable. The cable snapped under very little pressure. What some people would say was little pressure. No. Oh, uh, but it wasn't. This was actually starting to twist quite a bit. It's very, very strong. Um, and I would rather have the winch line snap before my expensive over $100 winch servo uh, craps out or eats its own gears. But regardless of that fact, boom, boom, boom. And I wish I would have ordered 200 pound. Look at this. One of the things I find challenging uh, and unsafe, which is kind of a joke because I'm just f***ing around with RC, it doesn't really mean that it's unsafe, uh, that when a cable from a winch snaps, people can lose body limbs. Well, thankfully, I didn't lose any from this one-tenth scale because the cable was too small. Um, and, and at the same time, you need to be able to see it. At, you know, this is a gray cable. When it's strung out, you can't really see it. Well, this this here is nice and yellow. Ba boom! Look at that. So I'm going to be able to uh, string it out. This is 100 pound uh, uh, braided fishing line, right? I wish I would have got the 200 pound. It would have been a little bit thicker and it would have been a little bit uh, nicer to have in, in different situations. Um, but that's no problem. 
do you guys remember when I put a snatch block on the front of my uh, bumper here? This is the winch with the snatch block. If you use a snatch block and you understand the use of it, which basically doubles the power of your winch, you also know that when you use a snatch block, it uses double the line because you're having to run two like uh, two lines back to the to the winch and the hook instead of just one. So it takes your seven feet, cuts it down to three feet, which really limits what you can hold on to or grip onto with your trail truck when you're in a competition or out on the trail. I know I do talk a lot. I try to fit a lot into this shit, and if you don't like it. Um, hopefully you've tuned out already and I know the people that are watching right now love it That's why you're here. So hit the like button because you know, I'm gonna beg for it anyway <laughs> Okay, let's uh, get these uh, both of these winch lines strung up and then see how it works out vis visually I don't think you'd be surprised to hear I get a lot of comments of people that say, Oh, you talk too much, or, Oh, I don't like the sound of your voice, it's so annoying. But then when I comment, then f***ing turn down your volume or go away, I'm the asshole. How does that work? You're making the choice to watch my shit if you don't like it, f*** off. And then there's the other folks that are asking me when my son Morris is going to start appearing on the show again, or getting mad at me because I, I started leaving cuss words in my videos. Uh, even though most of the bad ones are still edited out, uh, but and saying that you know I'm not being a good YouTuber anymore. But those people don't understand that the USA FCC has COPPA law in place, uh, and basically, if I have Morris on the show or if my show is deemed made for children, that even in Canada the FCC can find me forty-five thousand dollars per infraction where if my uh, videos are said made for kids uh, and they're not or vice versa I can get in trouble so don't be so selfish I still make this show after all these years because I love each and every one of you but I can't jump through everybody's hoops I just got to be me and make shit that I like and if you like it awesome uh, let's get this unspooled and get this changed out I've always tried to make all ages content here on my channel. That's what I've always said it was since the beginning. And if I don't prove in some way that it isn't made specifically for children, there's big penalties to be paid, as I mentioned. And so I don't want any mistake on that. Although I love all the families that watch. Big shout out to everybody. I know you spend lots of family time watching me, so I'm sorry. But uh, the world is changing and, you know, you got to change with it as you go. And if people say it's not family friendly, I say, well, it is friendly, family friendly. It's family friendly for my family. That's just a tongue twister by itself. <laughs> so there it is. All I had to do was undo four different bolts just holding in the servo. Then there's going to be one center um, screw that's on the inside, which you can't see because it went out of focus. But I can take that spool right off. And I'd like to say thank you to everybody that keeps tuning in. Even though we've had to go through all these changes over the last 12 years, people that truly are understanding uh, and keep coming back here to show support for my family and I and to the hobby itself. You know, there is just something magical about the radio control hobby where there really is something for everyone if you give it a chance, you know. So there's this line. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I love how easy this is as it flops out of my fingers and falls on the floor. Yes, look at this. Beautiful braided line. So this is, I'm, I'm going to be able to put on a lot more feet uh, of line at least, or a lot of more inches, whatever you'd like to say. Probably about an extra meter. Here's the spool. I'm just going to push it right through to the other side. There is no set screw. This is the side that lines up with the splines of the servo. Sorry, there you go. And then of course what you do is you just clamp down the line when you uh, put the screw and put the spool back on the servo. Just like that. Now be prepared if you're using 100 pound fishing line, an ordinary pair of scissors ain't going to do it. You're going to need a razor blade. That is probably right about enough. And then I know I got to lead a little bit there because it's going to go straight up through the fair lead at the front. 
Now it makes me wonder how much cable is this? Like is it more than before? Let's unspool it and see. Now this will give you a good reason of why I changed the color. Look at this. All the way over to my buggy, all the way over to the antenna holder. I will tell you exactly how far that is. 14 feet. So not only did I double the strength, but I double the length that I'm going to be able to string it out at now because with the snatch block, I definitely am going to need at least five feet of line if I need to pull myself out of somewhere serious. And now I can see exactly where the line is going to be the entire time. Now I just got to re-spool it and make sure I spool it the right way. And so for those that missed it, you'll see, I took my battery out here. That is a modified um, Red Cat Gen 8 um, Reefs RC servo mount right there. Basically, it centers up the spool, and it spools through the center of this area right here. And, of course, installed just so you can see that line right there nice and clear. So I go underneath, because this is where my battery actually sits, is right on top. I know, I'm in the middle of filming, just give me a second. And <laughs> there we go, so that one's done. All I have to do is spool up the back one as well. Now, in case you're wondering, see the line come down, then the snatch block with the hook. See how it's just it's threaded through. Then a piece of heat shrink. Then a collar with a grub screw. Then my beautiful gold hook that I've been waiting to use for on something for years. And then this. And so basically this is going to go into the end of the collar. I'm going to bring the collar down to the end. Make sure everything's lined up here properly. I'm going to cinch it down like so. And then I'm going to bring this piece of heat shrink over and put this through the end of the heat shrink, like so, even though I can't do it in front of you with one hand. Also, that's what she said. Ah, uh, if you guys don't know what USA uh, uh, COPPA law is, it's basically YouTube or the whole thing that's going on with that, it's, it's like past news now, but it's always current, um, is that YouTube was caught, you know, collecting kids, uh, data, for advertising purposes. And so as part of the settlement, the COPPA law uh, is basically the Online Child uh, Privacy Protection Act, um, uh, or the Child Online Privacy Protection Act. And basically that's preventing websites from collecting uh, kids' data on what they view so they don't get targeted viewing. Now, how YouTube worked their way around this was by making the creator responsible for it. Uh, so we have to make sure basically that our, uh, that our content is not designed specifically for children and there's only very few ways to get around that. So there you go. So I got it nice and shrunk down there. Went a little wobbly on me. Not a big deal. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to melt my fishing line there so I got to be very careful here. But there you go. So that's exactly how that would be threaded. That's how I would finish that off so it wasn't causing an issue. And then you can basically just line it right back like this, and now you have yourself a functional snatch block with a cable that you can see basically in any environment. And that is very helpful, my friends. It was a little bit too long, so I trimmed her back a little bit on that heat shrink so it could fit properly, but there it is. Ta-da! You can see the yellow cable through there. That's what it is. This is where I mount the front of the truck if you guys missed that. And I also mount the body of the truck through these holes on the bumper, which actually holds my whole body in place. And there you go. So one in the front and one in the rear. <laughs> they just keep coming. <laughs> I know you guys are filling it in down below, but I know that there's lots of people still watching. Guys, thank you so much. I want you to let me know what the favorite part of your video today was uh, because it always helps me make good content for you guys all the way around the world. I always appreciate it when you stop by to check out my films. Leave me a comment. Help me pass the time during this health crisis of 2020. 
journey. And hopefully I've done a good job today of inspiring you or at least making you feel like you want to try out the hobby of radio control. Those stacks are pretty sick, eh? Let me know what you think, guys. And we'll leave it off on this note. We'll see, whoa, uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode of RC Adventures. Bye for now. Shout out to my buddy Dirt Devil. Thanks for the license plate.